G'day everybody, Max Wright here, and I've got a really fun guest for us to talk to today. One of the questions I get all of the time is like, when do I buy? When do I sell? How do I manage those emotions? You buy and it's just the price is going down. Should I liquidate immediately? Do I stick with my trade? How do I manage all the nerves? Well, I happen to have found somebody um, who is an absolute expert at that, who has um, systems and procedures in place to help every single person as a trader. Scott Phillips, thanks so much for being on the show. Fantastic to be here, Max. So why don't you uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience a little bit and tell them a little bit about yourself and your background? Okay, so I've been a professional trader for fifteen years now, and I didn't start out successful. I I started out losing money as though I was an automated losing machine, um, and I was trading traditional financial futures, commodity futures, uh, spot FX, things like that, and I traded a little bit of Bitcoin along the way in the early days in like 2013, 2014. And what I found is that trading as in I'm going to pick this coin, this stock, whatever, and it's going to go up because I think because I've got it right, creates these incredible stressful emotions on you. And almost nobody in the world, I mean, there are people good enough, but but I'm never going to be that good. So what I do and what my expertise is, is, is in designing trading systems, which are simple sets of rules, which you follow day in, day out, follow the rules and you'll get the money. And, and what it does is it makes in, it makes investing very, very reliable. And I've been successful in that. Um, I had my last losing year in 2010. Since 2011, I've been profitable. Um but what we found is something really amazing, which I call the greatest discovery in little guy finance, which is if you take in the list of things that actually work in the markets is, is not a million things wide. Like there's a, like it's a very small list of things that actually really no bullshit work. And so what we found is that in every single instance, if you take standard investment banking hedge fund um, type trading systems and apply them to crypto, in every single instance, they work orders of magnitude better. I mean, so the things that I'm talking about are specifically selling volatility, carry trades, and momentum, which are the the three you call you call banking strategies that have the most evidence behind them. The only other one is value, what Warren Buffett does, but we don't really have fundamentals in crypto, so value is off the table. So let let me share my screen if that's okay. So. And the yellow line is Bitcoin since 2019. And, and Bitcoin is, without any doubt, the fastest appreciating asset of all time. Like it's the best, if you had to pick one thing in all of human history to own, Bitcoin from, from, from early days. The problem inherent with Bitcoin is that the yellow line is Bitcoin. It does amazingly. And then you have a really bad period and a very scary period right at the end. This is the 2020 COVID crash. Then you have this amazing, astonishing, record-breaking year. And right when it looks like the sky's the limit, you lose half your money and Bitcoin goes from 60000 to 29000 And then, And then some people sell out here because they're scared. It's gone half down. I've made a lot of money, bank it out. And then they see it coming back up to, to 69000 And I think, oh, my God, I'm going to miss out. I've got FOMO. And then they buy right here again, ready just in time to get Luna, Three Arrows Capital, and FTX at the end, and then it doubles from this low base. This is a heartbreaking and emotionally really raw roller coaster for most people who aren't committed to I'm going to hold my Bitcoin forever, which is the optimal strategy for Bitcoin. But that strategy does not and cannot work for altcoins because the, if you look at statistically the percentage of altcoins which have outperformed Bitcoin over more than one full cycle, it rounds to zero, right? Like, like the, 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 the coins that have outperformed Bitcoin over more than just like one up and down, pump and dump, almost none, handful, like, like really a handful of coins. So the hodling strategy which is absolutely optimal for Bitcoin, is not optimal for altcoins. But altcoins have some of the most explosive growth that you could possibly imagine. You know, Sol Solana going from a dollar to $250. And, you know, you could pick 100 examples. I, I mean, yep. the, the times of Bitcoin going from $10 to $10,000, that's probably done. You know, I mean, I, I, I think we'll see a million dollars of Bitcoin but still, percentage-wise, it's it's dwarfed by the the 
profits available in altcoin. And this is an inherent problem for the crypto ecosystem. So we have deep, deep in our nature, we have this lottery ticket bias where you see someone getting rich off Pepe coin and you think, well, why can't I get rich? That seems perfectly plausible. It's kind of a dumb thing to do, but people will do it. And, and when they do it, they tend to lose their money. So what we're doing is we're buying, this is a strategy called trend following, which has been the most successful by far strategy and the most researched uh, uh, strategy in the academic and financial and hedge fund world in the last 20 years. The strategy works by buying every coin that starts to go up, just a small amount. You don't, if a coin is flat, you don't buy it. As soon as it starts going up, you, you, you buy a little position. And if a coin starts going down, first of all, you sell any positions that you have and then you short it. So what this means is mechanically, every time a coin goes to the moon, you're absolutely guaranteed to own some of it. Not a big amount, not a giant stack, just a little bit. And every time a coin gets rug pulled, you're absolutely guaranteed to get some of it. And, and uh, over the last weekend, we saw the crypto market melted down with the Binance SEC thing. And we're going to take a look at some results of see how it made money when, when, uh, when the market dumps. So this blue line is the return of our system. So you can see that Bitcoin outperforms it in the good times, but our system doesn't have these giant big swings. So what we're doing is we're mechanically changing the return distribution so typically, Bitcoin is like a four-year cycle-ish thing, or it has been so far. It probably won't be going forward, but but you make really great money one year, and then for three years, you're probably you know living on scraps or losing money. That is a real problem emotionally for people, and I and I like to think that I've solved it. So what we can do is we can turn this distribution into something that makes money every year. Now, this sounds on the face of it like it's an incredible too good to be true thing. It's not actually too good to be true, and it comes with a downside. And I want to be upfront about the downside. You're betting on an outlier win. You're, you're betting on finding the Solana coin that goes to the moon, the Luna coin that goes to the moon, or goes to zero. Either or is good. Doesn't matter. So, so I think that's uh, let's let's just pause and explain that to people there. So <clears throat> even the, even on a rug pull, you're going to make the like one of the, the biggest amounts of money because as something starts going down, let's have a look. You you short that, and then if it goes all the way to zero, that's the best thing. That's best possible result for you. Um, what was the uh, Rug pull on the weekend. Um, the SEC rug pulled. The SEC rug pulled everyone in in, in Solana. So what we're doing here, how this works, is we make a forecast of how strong the trend is, and if the forecast is positive, and I'll, I'll get into exactly how we do it. Um, I'm not like a guy with secrets, so like I'll show you the whole thing. Um, I just don't want to get bogged down. If the forecast is positive, we bet that it goes up. So here we got long here and stayed long to some degree in about here. And then mostly we started getting short here. But what's really interesting is the last couple of weeks. So you can see that the big SEC news about Solana happened over the weekend, right? This was yeah. the, the market dumping. So we've been short, mostly short since about here. And every day we either add a bit to the short or subtract a bit to the short, depending on how our, our signal forecast strength is. And you can see that about a week before the market really dumped, we started accumulating a short position and now we're very short and we're still short. So if we look at, um, if, if we look at anything that's um, had a big dump, like let's look at, actually look, let's look at, what are we long and what are we short today? So today we're long Bitcoin dominance futures. Obviously, that's a good thing. But we're short Matic, Solana, CRV, SNX. And these are the things that have got absolutely hurt the most. So Solana and Matic hurt by the SEC announcement. Let's have a quick look at, 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 at Matic. Um, this is our software, by the way. This is not uh, um, uh, This is not something. Some third party software, we built this from ground up. And let's look at it the last 90 days. And you can see that with Matic, we've been short from here. We started accumulating a short position. Now, the question arises, how am I sure that my particular algorithm has got it right? And the answer is, I have to have the humility to say that I'm not sure. 
So how do I how do I solve that problem? And the standard way that quant finance um, um, algorithmic traders do it is by averaging a number of different systems. So what we have is 36 different trend following systems, and you can see these are the individual dots. We average them out into a into a, a final number, and when the when the number is 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 below zero, we bet that it's going to keep going down. And so you can see that with Matic, we've been short well before the SEC announcement. And we remain short and we've and we've really been profit maximizing. So we've got these huge unrealized profits. So the phenomenon at its heart, which is what the real effect we're trying to monetize, is that one, these things called trends exist in the market. We believe that trends are a real thing, and we believe that trends are a byproduct of there's a bunch of behavioral economics explanations, but but mostly it's an underreaction and an overreaction. So for example, in in Bitcoin, remember when we had the 2020 dump and and at the start of COVID? Yep. That was in retrospect an overreaction. And then yep, sure. when when the trend gets back on track, we have an underreaction. So the uh, the underreaction, and then eventually we have an overreaction where people get FOMO and they think if I don't, but it's gone from. It's gone from 10,000 to 60,000. If I don't get in now, I'm going to miss out. That we've all felt that emotion. If I don't get in now, I'm going to get, I'm get, I'm not going to get it. And that emotion historically for you is nearly always wrong, right? Yeah. Like anytime I feel like I'm so scared about Bitcoin, I've got to sell all my Bitcoins or, or, or anytime I feel like for me, it's always been shopping for real estate with my crypto winnings. Like every time I've done that, I've, it's just been like, that's the top, like, like stick a pin in it and walk away. So what we're doing is we're betting on every, every trend that starts to form. And many of these don't amount to anything. So we bet on a trend starting here. And let's zoom in and see what happened. We, we bet that the trend started and, 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 and we're betting and we're going up and it's kind of making money, but, but that's a very uninspiring sort of a trade. What trend following is doing is trying to hold out for the big winner. So when you get the big move, the life-changing move from 10,000 up to 60,000, we're in it the whole way. Now, one of the problems that people have when they're trading is, the vol is what we call the volatility problem. So the idea is if you buy, if you've got some Bitcoin, you've got some real estate, you've got some stocks, you buy Bitcoin at $100 and then Bitcoin goes to 60000 now 90% of your net wealth is in Bitcoin. Doesn't sound like a problem. It's a good problem, but it's still a problem because your net wealth is fluctuating like this every day because Bitcoin fluctuates a lot. Yep. What we wanted, what we want to do if we're going to do a mathematically optimal portfolio solution is to predict the volatility and to predict our forecast and say what is the perfect position size for the exposure that I want to have right now. So uh, so here we take our forecast is positive and we take our forecast of volatility, which is mathematically quite easy to do. And we say this is our position size. So we're increasing our position size dramatically. And then as volatility spikes, we're, we're cashing some out. But we, we tend to ride. We, we started accumulating our position here. And we got out of it here. That's a pretty good run. Like, if you, if, if you like, I'm a pretty good trader. I'm a, I'm a professional. I've taken 10,000 lifetime trades. I've made money. Um, I couldn't do that on my best day. Now, the problem with betting for a big lucky winner like this is obviously that Bitcoin doesn't go from 10,000 to 60,000 every day. It happens luck. It, there's luck involved. How do we mitigate the effect of luck? Well, quant finance has solved that for us. You mitigate the effect of luck by taking many, many swings of that. And so what we're doing is we're simultaneously trading every coin on your exchange that has liquidity. We're doing this automatically through an API connection. So you're not handing over your coins. It's your keys, your coins, blah, blah, blah. And, we're, and, and we've got a DeFi product that we're about to release um, where you can store your own coins on your own Trezor or Ledger on your own hard drive and, and do this without an exchange. 
So, so the idea is we're taking many, many bets and if you see, for example, an exchange listing and rug pull, this is a, a classic exchange listing rug pull VC situation, um, you, you can see immediately it gets listed, we're going short and we're riding it all, all the way down. And about here, we start to aggressively bank our profits on the short position and then get long just now in the last couple of days. So the idea is that we're going to be long the strongest coins and short the weakest coins. But there's now what does that do for us in the real world? So if we look at the yellow is Bitcoin, the blue is our system. In a, in a good year, like a 2020, you're never going to beat Bitcoin. It's not even, not even worth trying. But in 2019, Bitcoin did, well, let's look at, where's our end of year? So in 2019, um, Bitcoin did 94%, we did 121%. In 2020, Bitcoin beat us, did 301%, we did 152. 2021, Bitcoin didn't do so well, it did 59, still pretty good, we did 221. But in 2022, when Bitcoin lost money, We did. Uh, we did twenty three. Uh, we did twenty three, and in twenty. Uh, this is an old. This is an old thing. We've actually printed money, so we're way ahead of Bitcoin for the year. Um, and in the last couple of days, let me. In the last couple of days, we've put on almost twenty percent while the market was dumping. So the idea is that mechanically, if you're betting on things that are going down when they start to go down, and the market dumps. We reap a great windfall. So instead of FTX rug pulled everyone, FTX was a scam, you've lost half your money. It's FTX was a scam. That's great. We made 20%. So what we're trying to build is an anti-fragile version of crypto trading and do it algorithmically. And my contention is if you had have bought Bitcoin at 69,000, you bought it at the absolute worst possible time. If you've hodled it, You've been through a really wild ride. You thought it was okay and, and it wasn't okay. And now it looks like it's going to be okay. And, and I think we'll see a million dollars for a Bitcoin. But in that time, emotionally, most people aren't equipped to deal with that. We've made money. You would have, you've made money and it does it in an actually unsatisfying way. Because you're waiting for a big winner, it goes sideways for long periods of time and then jumps up, goes sideways for long periods of time, jumps up. Let me, I think I've got one of our clients' accounts open um, somewhere on my thing. Let me just see if I can find it. Sorry, I've got so many. I've got so many windows open. I was just, uh, I was just with a client looking at his account a few minutes ago. That's all right. I, I don't want to go too far down this path. I would like for you to tell me a little bit about. Let's stay focused on the psychology. Like, what does this mean to people? Because I think you have hit upon probably the most important thing in all of crypto. For all the coaching and teaching that I've done with people, um, the vast majority of them fall into this trap about the emotions just take over and they do the exact wrong thing at the exact wrong time, almost yeah, so let's like it's that. a job. So why is that hard? Why is it? Why is trading? So, why does it feel like I can die when my Bitcoin went from sixty nine thousand down to sixteen thousand? Why does that hurt my? Why does that hurt? You, you know. It's like that meme, the dog will hurt you in other ways. Like Bitcoin will hurt your feelings, you know. Um, why does that happen? It's because your DNA was finalized about 100,000 years ago. And there's a couple of things about, you know, Caveman Max sitting out on the African savanna around a campfire. Any injury that you did, if you broke your leg, you're going to die. There's no antibiotics. There's no surgery. So we have to be very, very careful about losses. And your subconscious cannot tell the difference between losing money on a screen and a life-threatening injury that's 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 going to kill you. And also, if you're sitting around a campfire 100,000 years ago, you hear a rustling in the bushes. You can't just keep on telling stories with your buddy. You have to stop what you're doing and look, that could be a tiger out there or a lion about to eat us. Like you have to overweight. At a DNA level, we're hardwired to overweight recent evidence. So what we feel like is 
crypto has been going up for the last six months. It's going to continue to go on forever. And if I don't get it now, I'll miss out. And when it goes down, oh, shit, crypto's over. It's never coming back. Oh, man. Oh, why me? And so it brings these incredibly stressful emotions because to your to your limbic system, to, to, to your amygdala, this feels like you could die from it. These are, you know, it's not just numbers on a screen. It's incredibly stressful things. Yeah. And so the, the, the solution to that, the, what the professionals do is they have systems and processes which do the trades for them, the, ex- the entry strategy, the exit strategy. They're not sitting there watching YouTube videos deciding if they're going in on a coin or not that week. Well, it, it, there's, it, it's so hard to do it the other way. I'm not saying you can't do it, but there's a bunch of biases that we have. You know, we're all, we, we're, we're all tribal creatures. You know, you... you you start reading about a coin and then it sounds good. And then all of a sudden you've got this confirmation bias where you've done so much research. So you have to be right. Otherwise you feel stupid. I mean, there's, you know, and I've seen people pulled into the most, like I'll give you the greatest example is hex. It's like an obvious, obvious, obvious scam that the people who who are into it, they believe that it's going to overtake Bitcoin. It's like, it's just, it couldn't happen in a million years. It's not listed on any exchanges. It's got no. It, there's nothing good about it. It's it, and and the guy who runs it is is you know an obvious thief. But once people get into that community, they can't admit that they're wrong, and so they double down and they change their Twitter profile pics to being hexagons and you know all this really strange tribal behaviour. And you know the market doesn't care. Like Bitcoin just goes on, like TikTok next block, right? Like no one, no one cares if you, no one cares. It's not a football game. You're not cheering. You don't have to cheer it on. And also the coin doesn't know if you sold it. You're not being disloyal to Bitcoin if you sell some Bitcoins. Now, the beautiful thing about this from a Bitcoin hodler perspective is that let's say you buy Bitcoin, you buy some Ethereum and you buy a a handful of other rolls. All of those, all those investments are largely correlated together. We would like, in a perfect world, Bitcoin to be able to go up and alts to go down and, 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 and them all to be their own, own separate thing and we'd average out and it'd be good. But that doesn't happen in the real world. We saw on the weekend the market dumped and alts dumped harder than Ethereum and Ethereum dumped harder than Bitcoin, but everything, but Bitcoin was still down, right? Yep. Like, so we have a fundamental problem in that our returns are correlated. Whereas if we look at the... If we look at the returns of something like this, if we look at our correlation, where is correlation? So our correlation with Bitcoin is negative 5.58%. So this strategy is is very popular in, it's called CTA trend following. Um, You can Google it. It's very popular because it gives a, a return profile that tends to be the opposite of of stocks, of buy and hold stocks. So it's very advantageous if you've got some stocks and every 10 years stocks stocks wet the bed that you've got something that works when stocks are going down. So this is that same strategy applied to Bitcoin. So what you have is when, on those times when Bitcoin experiences a savage bear market, this hits it out of the park. And so the average of those two is very, very strong. Actually, using half this and half Bitcoin is much better than either on their own. And why is that? Because we know that mathematically, one of the only free lunches in finance is diversification. And mm-hmm. sadly, owning Bitcoin and Ethereum together doesn't give you as much diversification because they both go up or down together. This yep. is, a, is a totally different alternate world thing. And so the combination of these two provides, I believe, a return stream that people can live with. Now, if we look at, say, the drawdown over the last year. So while Bitcoin had a terrible, terrible year last year, there's no doubt, um, and it would have been hard for most people to live with. Like I, I, I hodled my Bitcoin, but 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 it w- I'm not saying it was easy. So our system drawdown over the last year was 8.3% at its absolute max, and we're at fresh equity highs now. So what we're doing is instead of having previous bear markets in Bitcoin have been 84%, 82%, 78%, they're about 80%. Most investors have trouble dealing with an 80% reduction in the value of their in the value of their assets. I'm trying to solve that problem by saying, okay, what could you live with? You know, it's unrealistic to expect gains without without drawdowns. That's not, you know, that you have to grow up and say, look, we're taking risk. We 
they're getting returned, there's, there's a downside of risk. But if we can get that to below 20%, then we've got something that people can live with in the long term. Now, mm. how much does it make? We're not making as much in, as Bitcoin in its best year, but on average, we're doing 107% a year. So this is about the outer limit of what someone can promise you before it becomes bullshit. So, the, you know, there's a bunch of, you know, I promise, to, uh, I promise you, you know, 300 400% a year. That's nearly always Ponzi scheme or bullshit. Um, the re this same strategy applied to traditional finance futures markets, which I've done for many years, um, produces between 13 and 15% a year, depending on how you do it, which is actually pretty good. That's like Warren Buffett level returns. You apply the same thing to crypto and you're looking between 50 and 100%, depending on the year and an average of 107% a year. Now that's about the outer limit of what's possible before we get into bullshit territory. Um, so why does crypto return so much more than regular markets? Well, it's newer, so it's more inefficient. Proper investment banks can't play in this because, you know, if you're, if you're working for a hedge fund and you say, hey, I want to invest, I want to deposit a billion dollars to, to Binance to trade crypto, um, they're going to fire you. Um, and it's just riskier. Like a rational investor would want a higher return for, for investing in crypto than, they, than they'd want for, inv for investing in stocks, right? So it, it kind of makes sense that we're taking more risk and getting more return. That's at its heart what crypto is. And and this is a very, very effect, a very, very effective way to do that in a really proven way. And the evidence that trends tend to continue. We have the, the oldest records we have of price changes. We have some ancient Sumerian grain grain futures contracts, like years before money, a thousand years before money was even invented, 2000 years before money in 3000 BC, we have these ancient Sumerian grain prices, which are, which are saved um, or discovered. And you run a trend following strategy on these ancient prices and it still works. And we've got, you know, Japanese rice futures from 400 years ago and it still works. And the oldest continuously traded financial market is in is in America. It's cotton. They from the slave trading days. They used to trade cotton under under a cotton tree under a tree, and and that was the first cotton trading futures exchange. This works perfectly. So what we have is we've got a strategy that's worked as long as we have evidence of prices changing and, and markets buying and selling, and we've got a strategy that's been that's running three hundred billion dollars worth of money in the the real markets. And most importantly, it's very anti-fragile. In the 40 years that this has been run in real markets, we haven't had a single firm blow up with it. So every firm that's tried this has been successful within the confines of what it is. And so this is a strategy which relies on diversification, which relies on taking 100 different bets. Crypto is the perfect market for that because we have thousands of these stupid little things that you can bet on. And, and that's what we do. You, and and so you, don't even, you don't even care if they go up or down. Your strategy is perfect what? for both. I love the idea here, um, Scott, that the uh, it works beautifully in co in conjunction with a hodl strategy. Absolutely, buy and hold your, your Bitcoin, and then have a little bit. And it's going to take the lumps out, and it's going to going to help better your psychology than, enormously. Better better than just just doing my thing. Like I hodl some Bitcoin for exactly that reason, because if you believe. That diversification is the only free lunch in finance, which is mathematically provable. I'd bore you if I proved it, but it's but it's true. Then that that that's that's a free buffet. You should eat as much as you can. Like there's absolutely no reason to be diversified. Yep. To not I, love be I love it, Scott. We're out of time. Where can people find you? Um, where can people f find me? Uh, Finrev.trade. I have a. Uh, if you Google Scott Phillips on YouTube, you will find me there. I have an old website from my traditional finance trading days called Scott Phillips Trading, um, but I've pivoted completely to crypto. I'm 100% crypto these days. Um, crypto is the more exciting market. It's the more profitable market. I'm, it's it's the it's the best opportunity of my lifetime, and and uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to love diving deeper into your teachings here. I'm going to, we're going to continue to chat again in the future, I'm sure. Absolutely. Guys, hit the like button, subscribe button. Let me know in the comments if you love seeing Scott on the, on the channel. We'll have him here again soon. And stay tuned. We're going to have one uh, coming up here in the next week, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.
Awesome, Max. Thank you so much for your time.